जय हिंद एवरी वन माई नेम इज़ श्रद्धा जौहरी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर आई टी डिपार्टमेंट इन ए के जी ई सी गाजियाबाद टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टॉपिक ऑपरेटर्स इन सी विच इज़ इन प्रोग्रामिंग फॉर प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग द सब्जेक्ट कोड इज बी सी एस वन जीरो वन सो एज वी नो दैट इन सी वेन एवर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सी इट इज़ अ लैंग्वेज विच इज अंडरस्टूड बाई द कंप्यूटर सो ऑपरेटर्स आर जस्ट लाइक द Uh, variables or you can say alphabets which work for the language so c supports a rich set of operators these are basically the symbols on which various logical manipulations are done so based upon the operators we can calculate various data on the which are stored in the variables so c provides various types of operators few of them are arithmetic operators relational operators logical operators assignment operators increment and decrement operators conditional operators bitwise operator and special operators so one by one we are going to discuss all these operators so let us start with the arithmetic operators as we all are very much familiar with the arithmetic operators from the childhood we are uh, doing all type of calculations so arithmetic operators are basically what these are the addition subtraction multiplication division modulo division so here we have the symbols and the meaning so first we have the plus operator that is the addition or unary plus next we have the subtraction or unary plus minus next we have multiplication which is represented by asterisk and then we have division and then modulo division so now we are going to discuss each of these operators in detail so first of all we must take the example as we all know how to multiply how multiply works so how we multiply it is written a cross b so if i take suppose example is a is equals to 9 and b is equals to 3 so if i am taking a is as 9 and b as 3 the result is 27 so here it is written a into b is 9 into 3 27 that is the multiplication operator now divide divide is a divide b that is 3 as a is 9 and b is 3 so what we get as result that is 3 next we have addition that is a plus b that is 9 plus 3 that is 12 Next we have subtraction a minus b. Nine minus three is equals to six. And last but not the least we have a modulus b. A modulus b gives the remainder part of the question. So nine divided by three is what quotient we get three. But remainder here we get is Zero. So what modulus will give? Modulus will give you the remainder. So remainder here is zero. So the result is zero. Next we have integer arithmetic. As we know, we are programming in a computer. So we are making computer understand what we are saying. So it is very much important that on which variables we are, on which data set we are working the. calculations so first of all we have integer arithmetic integer arithmetic means whatever variables we are taking for arithmetic operations both are in integer form means for example if i am taking a plus b then a and b must be in integer form in decimal number so what the result we get we get integer arithmetic so integer arithmetic means the variables which we are taking to store the data must be declared as integer type now what if i consider a example a divide b now if i say that uh, 10 divide 3 a is 10 and b is 3 the result will be 
3.333 and so on. So, as variables are declared or taken as integer type, they will only store the integral part. That is, the result will be only 3, not 3.3. That is integer arithmetic. The decimal part will be truncated. Next, we have real arithmetic. Real arithmetic means uh, many times a situation occurs when we have integer data as well as decimal data with us and we have to perform calculations on the mixed type of data. So, an arithmetic operation which involves real operands is known as real arithmetic. So, in this particular case, in this particular kind of arithmetic evaluation, we can take our uh, variables as integer type as well as float type. So, for example, here it is written x is equals to 6.0 divided by 7.0. That is both the variables a and b are taken as decimal type. So, what the result is? The result is 0 0.85. Next, y if we take y is equals to 1 divided by 3. Again, the result is 0 0.333. But what we have seen in the previous example when we are taking integer arithmetic, if one value is of integer, that data is, is going to be stored in integer type data uh, variable, then we are getting the integral part only. The decimal part is truncated. So, next z is equals to minus 2 by my 3, the result is minus 0 0.666. So, in real arithmetic, we can consider uh, decimal as well as the floating point number, but in case of integer arithmetic, we can only take the integer part, decimal part is being truncated. Next, we have the mixed mode. This is the real time data in which few uh, parameters or few data are in integer type and few are in floating point. As example is written 15 divided by 10.0. This particular 15 is of type integer and this 10.0 is of type float. So, here we are getting the result in float type. What does it mean? It means when we are taking the mixed mode that is one is of integer type and one is of float type, the result will be uh, stored in the float type. That is the variable uh, which has highest bytes. Next, if both the numbers are in integer, then we will get the result in integer type only. Next, we have relational operators. So, what are relational operators? Relational operators are basically used to compare the data. So, whatever data we have, sometimes we want to compare each and every data. So, with the help of relational operators, we make comparisons between the data which we have. So, few of the relational operators which have less than operator, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, equal to and not equal to. So, these are the relational operators which we have in C through which we compare data. Now, whenever we are going to compare data or we want to establish some relationship between the data, the simple format for this is arithmetic expression 1, relational operator, arithmetic expression 2. Means, if I say, if I write a plus b is less than 6. So, here arithmetic expression 1 is what? a plus b, whatever is the result of a plus b is compared with the second arithmetic expression that is 6. So, it is not necessary ki each and every time a e 1 and a e 2 are being arithmetic expressions. You can directly give the simple constants, variables or any kind of data which can be compared. So, if I suppose uh, provide a is equals to 1 and b is equals to 2, the result is 3. So, actually what I am comparing, I am comparing is 3 less than 6. So, whenever we are using relational uh, operators, the result we get is in the form of true 
and false. So, 3 is less than 6, the condition is true. So, the result is true. Now, relational operators are being used in decision statements in the programming, such as when we use if statement or while statement. So, uh, these are the relational operators which we use in the decision making. Now, we discuss few examples of relational operators. So, first we consider, I have given you the example of less than, that is 3 is less than 5. The answer is true. In computer language, true is represented by 1. So, whenever we are writing true, what it means? It means 1. And when we say false, it means 0. So, if 3 is less than 5, answer is true. So, what computer will return us? It will return 1. That is true. Now, 7 is greater than 9. Condition is false. So, what we will get? We will get 0. Next, we have 100 is less than equal to 100. The result is true. That is 1. Why is it true? Because we have put, in, put the equal to sign. So, 100 is not less than, but it is equal to the 100. So, result is true. Next, we have 50 is less than equal, greater than equal to 100. Result is false. Now, when we want to equate the, uh, uh, use the equate expression, that is, we want to compare whether the two terms are equal or not. In that particular case, we use assignment operator, that is, 2 times equal to sign. So, it is written 20 to equal to equal to 20, which means we are comparing whether the first expression is equal to second or not. So, as we can see 20 is equal to 20, the result is 1, that is true. Next, 20 is not equal to 20, which means the result is false because 20 is equivalent to 20, the result is false. So, in this way, we are going to use the relational operators. So, basically, relational operators are just providing us the relationship between the two expressions which are written left and right side of the operator. Next, we have logical operators. So, C support three logical operators that is logical end, logical or and logical not. The logical end operators and are used when we want to uh, compare more than one conditions. Either we can say as uh, in the previous slides we uh, saw that uh, we are comparing 3 is greater than 5. The result is false that is 0. But along with this statement we also want to check Four is greater than five means we want to uh, establish relationship between more than one situations. So here we have three is greater than five, and here we have four is greater than five. So here we can use the logical and. So whenever in decision making we have expression which combines more than one expressions then these kind of uh, this, uh, expressions are termed as logical expressions or compound relational expression and result. So, if I expression 1 yields result 0, expression 2 yields result 0, the result is 0. If any one expression yield true result, then also the result is 0. The result will be true only if both expressions yield true result. So, if I am writing 6 is greater than 5 and 7 is greater than 9, 6 is greater than 5, it is true. That is, it will yield result 1 and 7 is greater than 9, it is false. It means it will yield result 0. So, one expression is true and another is false. So, result is what? Result is 0. 
नेक्स्ट वी हैव और ऑपरेशन लॉजिकल और वॉट लॉजिकल और सेज लॉजिकल और सेज कि वॉट एवर इज द एक्सप्रेशन वन लॉजिकल और सेज वॉट एवर इज द एक्सप्रेशन वन वी हैव एक्सप्रेशन वन एक्सप्रेशन टू एंड रिजल्ट so result will be true if any one or both the expressions are true so if i write the result 0 0 for expression 1 and expression 2 result is 0 but if any one expression is yielding 1 then the result is 1 and if both expressions are yielding 1 the result is also 1 so in this particular example 6 is greater than 5 it will yield what it will yield 1 and 7 or 7 is greater than 9 what it will result it will result 0 so 1 or 0 the result is 1 now logical not logical not says whatever is the result we are getting from the expression just revert it if we are getting 6 is greater than 5 what is the result result is 1 it is true that 6 is greater than 5 but we have used the logical not so what logical not will do it will revert the answer so whatever the result of expression result of expression is what it is true but it will yield final result as false that is the logical not that is it will revert the result next we have assignment operator this is the fourth kind of operator which c supports so assignment operator is nothing but it just uh, uh, assigns the value within the given variable so if i write v op is equals to expression that is v is the variable exp is the expression op is the arithmetic operator and it is also known as short hand assignment operator so if i simply write a is equals to 4 and b is equals to 5 and sum is equals to a plus b so what it will give sum is equals to a plus b that means value of a is added with b that is 4 plus 5 9 and it is being stored in sum so the result is sum equal to 9 so we are assigning the value 9 to the sum variable similarly we are assigning 4 to variable a and 5 to variable b now assignment operator can also be used as the shorthand assignment operator uh, how we have written sum is equals to a plus b so if i write a plus equal to b a is taken as 4 and b is taken as 5 so what it will yield it is written a plus equal to b which means 5 it is simply a is equals to a plus 5 which means result is going to be stored in a and a is what 4 means now updated value of a is 9 that is assignment operator and we can also use it as shorthand assignment operator here we have taken some examples what we have written we have written a equal to a plus 1 and in shorthand form we have written a plus equal to 1 remember for using the shorthand operators the 
destination operator destination variable must be same as one of the operand which is present on the right hand side so a equal to a plus 1 is a plus equal to 1 similarly we can use it with minus multiplication and divide now what are the advantages of shorthand operators first of all there is no need to repeat or rewrite the variable which is already written within the expression. Next, it makes the statement concise and easy to read and more efficient. So, these are some of the advantages of the shorthand assignment operator. Next, we have increment and decrement operators. So, C provides two important operators that is increment and decrement. Increment and decrement both means plus and minus of 1 that is unit value is added to the uh, variable if we are using increment and unit value is decremented if we are using decrement operator. So, for using the increment we write double plus and for using decrement we use double minus. Now, we can use the decrement and increment operator in the form of plus plus m or m plus plus that is we can keep the operators before the operand as well as after the operand. Both will yield the same result means if I write plus plus m it is equivalent to m equal to m plus 1 which means m plus equal to 1 and minus minus m is equivalent to m equal to m minus 1 which means m minus equal to 1 means if I take m is equals to 5 and I am writing plus plus m what will I receive? I will receive 6. That is the increment. And if I write minus minus m applying on the value 5 only, then I will get 4. Now, mainly these uh, increment and decrement operators are used when we use the loops that is for loop and while loop we when we extensively want the increment in the statements in the variables which are responsible for repetition of certain number of steps. So, here we have the example what plus plus do it simply adds one value to the current value that is if I write a is equals to 6 plus plus a will yield 7 and what if I write minus minus a it will yield 5. Now, here we have taken example a is equals to 6 comma b it is declared and b is equals to a plus plus. Now, there is a little bit difference when we write a plus plus and plus plus a. Here I have written b is equals to a plus plus. So, what a plus plus do? It will first assign the value of a to b and after that it will increment 1 within a. So, at this particular step when I print value of b I will get 6 and a is equals to 7. But if I write b is equals to plus plus a, what I will get? The value of a is incremented first and then updated in a. So, when I will write b is equals to plus plus a as in example number 2, what I will get? I will get b equal to 7 as well as a equal to 7. So, in this way there is a little bit difference between a plus plus and plus plus a. Next we have conditional operators. Conditional operators C provide conditional operator with, with the help of ternary operator pair. Ternary operator pair is the question mark along with colon. This is known as ternary operator pair and it is available in C to construct conditional expression. And the form that syntax is this that is expression 1 ternary operator is used expression 2 colon expression 3. 
where expression 1, 2 and 3 are expressions or any constant or variables and how this works? This works the condition which is written in expression 1 or the data which is written is expression 1 is checked, is evaluated first and whatever is the result, if it is true, the value which we get is true. Expression 1 is basically the condition and if the condition is true, then expression 2 will be executed. But if expression 1 is false, in that case, expression 3 will be executed. So, if condition is true, that is expression 1, yields true result, it will print expression 2. But if expression 1 yield false result, it will yield expression 3, that is written here. So, here in the example, we can see what I have written. I have written 12 is greater than 6. So, the result is what? True, 12 is greater than 6. So, what it will print? It will print 1. But if I have written 12 is less than 6, what it will give? The result is what? 12 is greater less than 6. Condition is false. So, it will directly print 0. So, in this particular case, I will get the result 0. Next, we have bitwise operators. So, bitwise operators are basically special operators which perform calculation or manipulation of data at bit level. Till now, we have performed all the calculations on data which is input by the user in the form of integer, float, double, long, etc. But bitwise operators will only perform uh, manipulations on bits. Secondly, the data uh, which uh, we take as an input must be in integer type only. Bitwise operators are not implemented on float, double or any other data type. So, for performing bitwise operation, we only need integer type data and the operations which are performed on integer data first converted into bits and based upon the conversion after that all the manipulations are done. Manipulations uh, such as testing the bits, shifting them right or left, these are the operations which are performed bitwise. So, for bitwise operation, their data type must be integer type. For example, bitwise end. For bitwise end, the operator is end. So, for example, if I take 5 and 6, what is going to be the result? So, 5 if I uh, am taking the short int type data, if I declare short int 5 and 6, then in that particular case, number of bits which are allocated within the memory are 8 bits. So, first of all, 5 is converted into bit form. So, how much bits we get? This is 5. And similarly, 6, this is 6. So, it is written AND operation. As we discussed previously with the logical AND and logical OR, similar way, the AND and OR will work. AND means if both the values, both the expressions are true, then only we get the true value. Otherwise, we get the false value. So, when we perform logical AND operation, what we will get? 1 and 0. The result is 0. 0, 1, it is 0. 1, 1, both bits are 1. It means here we get 1. And rest of the bits all are 0. So, we get 0. Now, what we get? This, that is nothing but 4. So, when we do logical, uh, sorry, bitwise end 
5 and 6, the result is 4. So, performing 5 and 6, we get 4. Similarly, with the OR operation. For OR operation, any one of it is 1, then we get the result as 1. So, 5 or 6 means that is 5 and that is 6. What we will get bitwise or? Here we have 1 and 0, we will get 1. 0 and 1, we will get 1. 1, 1, we get 1. If any one for doing OR operation, if any of the bit is 1, the result is 1. So, what we get? We get this. This is nothing but 7. So, when we perform the OR operation, what we get? 5 or 6 is 7. Similarly, the XOR operation. XOR operation says when the two bits are different in nature, then we get the 1. Otherwise, if both bits are same, in that particular case, we get 0. Means, if I perform Five XOR six. So what else I'll get? I'll get one and zero. Both the bits are different. The result is one. Zero one. Result is one. One one. The both bits are same. We get zero. So what is the result? Result is three. Next we have shift left. Shift left means shift the bits to the left hand side. So, whatever number on which we want to perform shift operation, it is written first. The symbol for shift left is this particular symbol and then how many times we want to shift is written here. So, here it is written 1. It means I have to shift 5 one time to the left hand side. So, how it is going to be performed? It is going to be done. It is written 5. Now, shift left all the bits by one place. So, this 0 is truncated or discarded. Next, this 0 will come here. This 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 and 0. So, what is the result? Result is 10 in decimal. That is Similarly, if we want to shift right, in that particular case, all the bits are shift in right hand side. So, if I take 5, shift right 1, all the bits are shifted one place right from the MSB. So, it is Here, this particular one is discarded. So, what we get here? We get 2. Next, we have some special operators which are also present in the C. Few of them are comma operators, size of operator, pointer operators, member selection operators, preprocessor operators. So, preprocessor operators you already use when we when we include the files in the C language that is hash symbol with along with the hash symbol we use the uh, in we include the header files within the C language. Next member selection operators when we use the structures uh, we use the dot operator or arrow operator to access the variables which are uh, declared by the structure type data. Next, we have pointer operators. We, when we deal with the pointers, we use asterisk and address of operator. Next, we have comma operator and size of operator. So, comma operator can be used to link the related expressions together. The 
comma length list of expressions are evaluated left to right and the value of rightmost expression is the value of the combined expression means for example if i have taken value is equals to x equal to 10 and y equal to 5 and x plus y so what value will store value will store x plus 5 here x is passed as 10 y is passed as 5 and value is going to be equal to 15 next we have size of operator size of operator is a compile time operator when used with an operand it returns the number of bytes the operand occupies means for example if i write m is equals to size of sum sum is what if i have declared uh, sum of integer type so sum is a variable that occupies how much bytes the number of bytes which are allocated to the int for example if two bytes are uh, occupied in memory when we declare a variable of type int so what compiler will return it will return 2 similarly if n equal to size of long int so how much bytes long int occupies in memory is returned here within the n so basically size of operators what is the general use of size of operator it is normally used when we want to determine the length of arrays and structures when their sizes are not known to the programmer so whenever there is a situation when we want to calculate the size or number of bytes which are allocated within the memory in that particular case we can use size of operator to guess the number of bytes which are being allocated within the memory so these are the references from which uh, i have covered the topic uh, so i hope the topic is uh, clear to you thank you so much uh, see you in the next lecture.